Hi everyone, this is Valash from Racing Brick. We still have a few August Technics sets to review. The next one is the 42175 Volvo FMX truck and EC230 electric excavator. The set has a rather large box. On the front we see the truck and the excavator on a construction site. The back shows more details, the pneumatic functions of the excavator and the engine of the truck is revealed as well. Let's open the box. The set has 2274 pieces, the price is 200 euros or dollars and it is already available. All local prices can be found under the link below. We have a lot of tapes to cut, this is again the new style box. Inside we find 17 numbered paper bags, an unnumbered mystery bag, a plastic one with the large frames and tires and an envelope. The mystery bag contains all the pneumatic hoses. The envelope is quite thick. Inside are three instructions which is a surprise and a fairly large sticker sheet. The manuals have some extras at the end, we see some features of the Lego set and a comparison photo with the real truck, then a comparison of the excavators and another page showing the different features and details. Now let's start building. The set uses the new smaller frame from the P1 and we can see the longer CV joint making its first appearance since 2021. Here is the coupling mechanism of the fifth wheel and one of the differentials. These are the first stickers of the set with many more to follow. Now to the next section. This truck also gets the new style cam pieces and before adding the appropriate pistons we build the steered front axle. Here are the pistons, you can see the action better from this side. The two assemblies built so far are now joined together. We add more details to the front including these small panel fairings that appear for the first time in Transclear. They get stickers which is a bit surprising and will sit at this very specific angle. I was hoping to be able to attach this assembly properly once it is mounted, but apparently the cross axle used is just a little longer than the rings and the dishes, so there's always a gap somewhere. This is an interesting way to achieve that particular angle with the outer black beams. More system parts to add details, and as an unusual move we already have to mount the wheels at this point. We start building the cab, these will be the doors, and after adding more details, it's time to attach the cap to the chassis, making sure that the gears for the steering are in the right position. A few more pieces, then we can tilt the cabin and the steering will also work. This cross axle holds the cabin in place. Here's a little trick with the fenders, then the two comfortable seats are installed. Here is the steering wheel that is fixed, a huge Volvo sticker that is much wider than the plastic as usual, and then comes the roof. The hand of God steering works, and after installing all the bells and whistles, the truck is finished. Building the trailer starts with this warm gear mechanism. After the big frames, we have to attach a whole bunch of these weird assemblies. Then comes a small repetition with three identical axles and we can already see how this mechanism will work. The build continues to grow and quickly becomes quite large. Then we add the panels and secure them with about 16 pins just to be on the safe side. We extend the sides of the platform, add a few more details, the wheels and the trailer is finished. But this section isn't complete yet because we still have something else to build. It looks like a big box but it's a bit more complicated than that. Yes, in 2024 these parts are still made of a different plastic mix so their shade is not the same as all the other pieces no matter what color they are. So yes, in the end it's a big box but it's actually the charging station for the electric excavator. And that's what we are building now. This is the base, I've now added all the wheels and as a fun fact bag 13 only contains the tracks, nothing else. We've added the turntable and then comes the pump and yes it works. More pneumatic components are added, then the cabin takes shape and here's a neat little trick, this rod is pushed through the pin there and it will hold the controllers. It's time to build the boom, that section is apparently going to be fixed. I added more segments, this is how it will work and now it's time to mount the two buckets. When the first pictures were released, there was a lot of discussion about whether the set will have a new white bucket or two regular ones and as you can see we have two of them. Now we can mount the boom, connect the cylinder and also attach the rest of the hoses. We have mounted the pneumatic switches and attached the small stickers that indicate the functions. We had more details and even more stickers on the body, these are the final touches and we are done. So here's the finished build and it looks pretty impressive. The full length is 68 cm or 26.5 inches, it definitely needs some space. Here's the car transporter for comparison. I'm not sure if they are the same scale, but you can get an idea of the size. Now let's take a look at the features. 
We can drive the truck of course, there is a hand of god steering knob on top. This can be removed if you prefer the look without it. The doors open, the interior is pretty basic and the steering wheel is fixed. The cabin can be tilted forward to reveal the engine, which is connected to the rear wheels via the differential. When you put the cabin back in position, the gears may need a little adjustment. The legs of the trailer are operated with this knob and this is how we can uncouple the trailer. The ramp is operated with another knob, it is quite simple and fast. The excavator's tracks don't have rubber inserts, so it slides on plastic and can also slide on smooth surfaces if you don't push it down. This could be the weakest point of the set. You need to choose the surface carefully if you want to play with the excavator. The operation is fairly straightforward. It can rotate fully and we can control it with the two switches behind the cabin. As it is an electric excavator, the charging station, which also contains batteries, <laughs> I mean stickers, so it can be used for charging. And that's all I think. The functions work quite well, apart from the track sliding I didn't experience any issues. The build is pretty solid, the only problem is the front of the cabin, these things move around freely, which is a bit weird. Now let's talk about the price. The set costs 200 euros or dollars, making it currently the most expensive non-motorized Technic set that is not 18 plus. The Airbus helicopter is very close in price and piece count, and the John Deere Skidder is only 10 dollars cheaper, at least at Lego. The helicopter is a very different build. It's motorized and has some sophisticated mechanisms inside, but the Skidder is also a pneumatic build. If I had to choose between these two, I would definitely pick the new Volvo set. Assembling the hoses was a pain with this one and the Volvo offers a lot more play features. It's certainly not a complicated build, you are not going to learn a lot of tricky new building techniques, but it offers a bunch of functions and I think the truck and trailer can be used for a lot of other things as well. Honestly, I don't recommend buying it for the recommended retail price from LEGO. In Europe, it's practically on sale for as low as 150 euros on day one, so it could get even cheaper later and hopefully you can expect some discounts in the US as well. For the reduced price, I think it's a solid playable set and a nice parts pack. I expect to see a lot of alternate builds and modifications as well. So folks, let me know what you think of the build and its functions. Let's talk about it in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video then please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe with notifications as there will be more exciting LEGO videos coming soon. See you next time, bye bye.